Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming and welcome to installing FreeDOS 1.2 inside of DOSBox. We will be using DOSBox staging, but this tutorial is guaranteed to work with DOSBox or DOSBox staging, whichever you prefer. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to scroll down or go to freedos.org. And I should also mention that uh, any links that I mention in this tutorial are in the description. So if you don't want to type it out, you can just check the description and click the link and off it'll take you. So we want to download FreeDOS and we're going to skip 1.3 for now. Uh, I'll do that one once it comes out and or once it's fully released, not a release candidate anymore. And then we're just going to grab download FreeDOS 1.2 and we're going to want to grab FD12 full. That's it. This is the uh, full USB version. After that, you're going to want to uh, go to dosbox or dosbox staging.github.io. And you're going to want to download uh, staging for whichever operating system you happen to be using. Uh, if you're on Linux, I believe Snap and Flatpak versions of this program exist. So, you know, use whichever you're comfortable with. Uh, I'm not sure about Windows. I don't own a Mac. Um, and then for Windows, it's just an archive zip and you just unzip it and then you put it somewhere. And then, I don't know, I just put it in my documents folder and I don't know. I'll never go in there ever again after I put the files in. It's not necessary because it's pinned down here. Okay, so now that that's done, just go on ahead and launch DOSBox staging uh, and then just close out of it. We just needed to do that just to make the config files. And so now what we need to do is we need to go to wherever you downloaded your FreeDOS 1.2 zip, open it up, and then open up the IMG file in there because we just want the stuff that's in there. And then we want to go to FreeDOS. And I made a folder in here already. Uh, yeah, let me nuke that. And want to go to FDOS 1.2. And then we're just going to copy everything over. OK, perfect. So now what we want to do is go to wherever the DOSBox uh, configuration file happens to be stored. In Windows, it's stored in app data local DOSBox. In Linux, I believe it's in uh, local shared DOSBox. I have no idea where it is in Mac OS. Um, but there's documentation. Uh, on the DOSBox wiki, which probably explicitly explains exactly where it is. I just don't have it. Okay, so then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up DOSBox staging. And we're not going to explain everything in here because there's a lot of stuff in here and I could probably spend like 15 minutes just talking about some of it. Um, but I will explain some of the things that I have um, set up. Uh, I'm actually going to set texture renderer back to auto. I was tweaking it earlier. I'm just changing it now. Uh, so you can leave texture renderer to auto for full desktop resolution. Just set it to desktop. That way it'll just run at whatever resolution your desktop is, uh, for display, uh, just leave that at zero or one or even two, depending on how many displays you have. I just leave it at zero puts on the primary display. Now for window resolution, this actually is an L not a one. Um, and what that is, is it makes the, uh, it'll make it large based on your desktop relative to your um, And so that way, like if you increase monitor resolution or whatever, it, it'll just kind of expand and scale with it. Uh, that way you don't have to set anything specific because the absolute default is really, really tiny. Um, and the only other thing that really needs to change is output. Now, there are a couple different things to say about output. Um, if I think by default, it's set to surface. Uh, surface will not scale uh, properly or at all, actually. I don't think you can use any of the scalers with surface. Um, and OpenGL does bilinear filtering, which for most DOS games, you absolutely 100% do not want. Um, and then you have OpenGL NB, which is OpenGL, but with no bilinear filtering. And then OpenGL PP, which is pixel perfect, which I don't particularly like that mode. But if you do like it, um, feel free to use it, you know, play around with it. 
pick whichever one you like, but I definitely recommend uh, just these two. Never, never, ever, ever open GL ever. That, that mode shouldn't even be allowed, but that's fine. Okay. Now, the only other thing that I will say, uh, when you scroll down here to DOSBox, you can just leave machine SVGA underscore S3. This is the type of GPU that it has in it, um, which is an SVGA S3. Uh, you can just completely just leave that to default. It'll work on like 100% of all games. I don't think I, but I don't think I've ever found a DOS game where the SVGA S3 doesn't work. Uh, and then for memory size, if you ever plan to play Daggerfall, set it to 32. Uh, note that some uh, installers might complain if you have 32 megabytes of memory, uh, but most of them still work. Like the SimCity 2000 installer, if you happen to have SimCity 2000 for DOS, uh, it will work, but it will also complain that you have negative 32 megabytes of memory. So each to their own, I suppose. Uh, and then as far as uh, render is concerned, everything here is default. You can set a GLS shader. And of course, like I said, it's very well documented. Uh, so I'm not really going to explain too much. You can just read and figure it out. Uh, but for the scaler, I said it's a normal 3x. I don't like these scalers here. Uh, they're great scalers, but they tend to uh, warp. Not really warp. Warp's wrong. They tend to cartoonify uh, due to the way they scale and blur uh, pixel art. And then these here, I'm not too sure about R RGB 3x, but these here add like scan lines. Not interested in that. I'd rather set like a CRT GLS shader rather than touch that. Okay. And then, uh, so I just have it set to normal 3X, which just renders it at a higher resolution and keeps the normalcy of pixel art or of the pixel art. Doesn't really mess with anything. Okay. So the next thing is down here, uh, you want to keep under CPU, you want to keep core to auto. There's really not a lot of reason to switch the core or the CPU type. Uh, just let it do whatever it feels like it's necessary because you know this way like if you try to launch like a really old application it'll just work because you know you're not trying to launch like a 286 application which i don't you may have one or a game that's a 286 and if you set it to like 486 it may or may not work or even a 386 i'm not really sure if it would work or not it's easier to just leave it at auto now for cycles i tend to emulate more accurate not more accurate but something closer to what the time would be. Um, so I set it to fix, which means it always render or sorry, runs at the fixed number of cycles. Uh, you can leave it at auto, but if you have any issues, you can come in here and change it to fixed and set it to whatever cycle count you want. So fixed at 47,810 cycles is kind of roughly what a uh, 133 megahertz 486 would run at in terms of the of cycles it can do um so that's what i set it to i've had pretty good result uh with that it's fast enough to play games and stuff but when you compile ooh, does it take forever and then we're just going to leave like the mixer and the sound and all this stuff alone um if you have the rom files you can add them you can enable gus if you happen to have the gus files and so forth but the main meat of this down here is auto exec now this is what runs when you first uh launch toss box or not when you first launch it but this you can tell it's a do certain tasks and this down here is what i normally have it run else folder so what we're going to do is at mount c and then inside of these here we're going to do the path to the folder we wish to use which in this case is youtube toss and then we're going to do dash free size 2048 because what we're doing is we're telling DOS, DOSBox that this is a two gigabyte partition, and that's exactly how you should see it. Um, if you set this, you can set this to be bigger, but it might be better to just mount another folder uh, somewhere, like even inside of YouTube DOS, or not inside of YouTube DOS, but somewhere else. Uh, it, it would probably be a better idea to just mount another folder, uh, not inside of YouTube DOS, but maybe inside of FreeDOS. You can call it DYT DOS, which would stand for, you know, drive D. And then, you know, you can make that one be another two gig drive. Uh, but the reason we're also setting it to two gig is particularly older DOS games. Just do not like a two uh, a hard drive bigger than two gigabytes. Uh, and for that, you also really need uh, DOS 7.1 as well. If you're going to go like 
way bigger into that. Uh, maybe DOS 6.22 can do it, but FreeDOS can easily handle uh, all sorts of stuff. FreeDOS is wonderful. A lot of issues that you would have to configure with DOS you don't have to do. Okay, so the next thing is uh, we want to assign that folder where we extracted all of our files into... Uh, we want to we mount it, so we're just going to mount it, and it'll just see it as like a normal drive, which is okay because FreeDOS can install that way. The next thing we want to do is we want to tell DOSBox to go into drive C and then execute, once you're inside of drive C, uh, the autoexec.bat file. Now, if we were to launch it right now, which we should do, it's going to error, but it did mount the drive, which is great. So now we're just going to do E colon, and then we're going to do setup, which will run the setup.bat file. And you can pick whatever language you prefer. You have a couple different options here. And yes, we wish to continue with the installation. And then, yep, US English. And we just want to do a full installation. Uh, a base package is like bare bones free DOS. Uh, I do not recommend it because it doesn't even include like edit or anything. It also doesn't include F dimples, which we'll talk about as soon as we get the install here. And we're doing full installation. And yes, please install FreeDOS. And then I'm going to actually hold control and then hit F12. And I'm going to turn up the cycles a little bit just to back a smidge faster. It might not seem like too much, but, you know, it's it's a fair bit to... And then as soon as we're done with this, we'll talk a little bit about F dimples. Um, actually, I talk about it right now. So F dimples is a program that's included inside of FreeDOS. Uh, and it, it, because FreeDOS itself is not very big. I think it's like 20 megabytes or something. It's, it, um, but if we always keep this mounted on E, anytime we type in F dimples, uh, it'll just launch. And then we can actually install programs, software, games, all sorts of useful stuff. Uh, if you were on like an actual machine or a much more proper emulator, like, uh, was it PCMM or I can't remember the name. There's an x86 emulator. Uh, no, we're just going to return to DOS. And then, you know, what? we'll just close out. Uh, but if you were on a much more proper machine, um, like an actual machine, uh, you know, it has like a TCP IP stack. It has network drivers. It, it's quite wonderful. Okay, so if you see this screen here, congratulations. FreeDOS is up and running inside of DOSBox. And you can type edit, for example, and now you have the FreeDOS editor. You can just make a new file. Hello, FreeDOS. And then we'll just hit Alt, F, and then X. And... Okay, so before we end this video, let's go ahead and open up F dimples by typing in F dimples. And so here you have it, you use the arrow keys and then you just use left and right arrow keys to go over and you can just hit uh, enter to mark it for install and enter again to deselect it. You can do the same thing for removing stuff. And there, there's quite a lot of programs in here. Uh, FreeDOS 1.3 probably has more up to date, but I mean, it's, it's DOS. So it's not like it's some of this stuff is up to date, but it's like 15 years old anyway. Um, and so that is that. And then you can hit tab to cycle between the windows. So if you tab, so you can see my cursor is here. And if it's here and I hit tab, you see the lower portion lit up. And now I can scroll down and I can see what files are inside of DJGPP Flex. And then hit tab again. And then I hit cancel and exit out of it. And there you go. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next video. I'm not really sure what it'll be, but I have a bunch planned. Uh, if you have any suggestions for anything, uh, do let me know. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much that. I will see you all in the next one. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Show this video around. And uh, if you have any questions, you can join my Discord or, you know, wherever. You can comment on the videos. I'll try to answer anything I can.